I recently read Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. Success, Maltz says, has nothing to do with prestige symbols. Your success is determined by your creative accomplishments. Thankfully, we all have an innate ability to accomplish creative goals, thanks to what Maltz calls our automatic creative mechanism. You can think of your automatic creative mechanism like an internal self-driving car. Your conscious mind is the operator who initiates action by starting the car and who defines a clear goal by inputting a destination. The car itself is your subconscious mind, which accepts your goal, your destination, and delivers you to that destination without much effort on your part. You can't see how the self-driving car is working, just like you can't see how your subconscious mind is working, but you must trust it will get you to where you want to go. Famous creatives have used their automatic creative mechanism to accomplish big goals. Charles Darwin, after months of trying to organize his book and failing, he stopped consciously thinking about his problem and delivered his goal to his subconscious. Days later, he was hit with an intuitive flash and the idea he needed to complete the origin of species came to him. Darwin said, I can remember the very spot in the road, whilst in my carriage, when to my joy, the solution occurred to me. In order for your creative mechanism to work for you, like it did for Darwin, you need to trust it. You must imagine a clear picture of what you want, establish a strong desire to realize that image, initiate action towards your goal, and then trust that your creative mechanism will find a way. If you find it hard to let go, and trust your automatic creative mechanism to get you to your goal without you having to analyze every step along the way, then your self-image is not aligned with your goal. In other words, some part of you doesn't believe that you're worthy of achieving your goal. Author Maxwell Maltz was a plastic surgeon and saw that his patient's self-image dictated how they behaved after their surgery. If someone had a deformity on their face and Maltz corrected it, making the person objectively beautiful, the person would often fail to see any difference in their appearance because they still maintained the belief that they were ugly. Later, Maltz discovered a similar phenomenon when people around him set out to accomplish big goals, like hitting a big sales target or improving one's grades to get into a top college. If the person's self-image was not sufficient for the goal they were aiming for, deep down, they doubted their capacity to achieve that goal, and that doubt interfered with their creative mechanism. To achieve a big, inspiring goal that will bring you joy and fulfillment, you must upgrade your self-image so that you feel that you are worthy of achieving that goal. The most efficient way to upgrade your self-image is to perform the following daily exercise. I've started doing this exercise while listening to a five minute song every day after lunch. I close my eyes and complete the following three steps. Step one, perform the following relaxation routine as described in the book. In your mind's eye, see yourself lying stretched out on a bed. Form a picture of your legs as they would look if made of concrete. See these very heavy concrete legs sinking far down into the mattress from their sheer weight. Now picture your arms and hands as made of concrete. They also are very heavy and are sinking into the bed. Repeat this with arms, neck, and every other part of your body. Now, why is this step important? Well, in order for your mind to accept steps two and three, you need to eliminate tension from your body. If you've ever seen a hypnotist perform on stage, you'll notice that the hypnotist starts their show by turning down the lights and getting people on stage to progressively relax their bodies. Their goal is to put their participants' minds in a suggestible state, more open to accept their instructions. Because tension in the body is a signal to the nervous system to reject incoming information. But when you release tension, you become more open and willing to believe information from people around you and your own mind. Step two, pick one thing you've been struggling with. Then imagine tomorrow you wake up and discover that the struggle is over and you've achieved a result that was beyond your expectations. You're not sure how it happened, but it happened. Now make this mental experience as vivid as possible by noticing small details. If you've been struggling to start a business, Imagine sitting in your future office. See the color of the desk, the make and model of your laptop, and the clothes you're wearing. Then imagine looking at your computer screen and looking at your monthly sales analytics. Imagine exactly how the chart looks, and then see in the corner of the screen your total sales for the last month. 
51,225. The more detailed you can make the experience, the more your mind will believe it's real. Now step three. Think of a string of small successes you've actually experienced recently. This includes any intention that you've set and met. Like this morning, you set the intention to get out of bed and you did. You set the intention to brush your teeth and you did. Maxwell says, how big the success is doesn't matter. All that matters is that the memory triggers a positive, happy, feel-good experience in you right now. Once you've built up a success feeling, you inject that feeling into the self that's in the goal image you've imagined in step two. When you associate the feeling of success with an experience you're imagining, you're conditioning your nervous system to believe that you are capable of that experience. You are in effect raising the standard for yourself and seeing yourself as a type of person who is comfortable in this new high achievement environment. Co-author Matt Fury used a similar technique on a group of college pitchers at a baseball training facility who were struggling to pitch faster than 90 miles an hour. 18 months after getting the pitchers to see themselves pitching 90 miles an hour and layering the feeling of success onto that image, the number of players who could throw 90 miles an hour went from 18 to 98. So why does this technique work? Well, the self-image is formed by experience, and your nervous system can't tell the difference between what you've actually experienced and what you vividly imagined you experienced. When awake and willing college students are asked by a hypnotist to imagine that one of their hands is immersed in ice water, thermometer readings show that the temperature of that hand drops. When hypnotized subjects are told their finger is a red-hot poker, most will grimace and some will actually produce a blister on the skin days later. If you conduct the three-step self-image upgrade visualization for at least five minutes a day for the next 21 days, you will start to see a shift in your confidence. You will feel like success is inevitable. And by doing so, you will get out of your own way and let your creative mechanism do what it was designed to do. Accept the goal you give it and then work behind the scenes discovering the best route to achieve that goal and offering you signs and solutions along the way. That was the core message that I gathered from Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. This is a self-help classic that will fundamentally change the way you think about goals. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.